The First Vatican Council Latin, Concilium Vaticanum Primum was convoked by Pope Pius IX on 29 June 1868, after a period of planning and preparation that began on 6 December 1864. This, the 20th Ecumenical Council of the Catholic Church, held three centuries after the Council of Trent, opened on 8 December 1869 and adjourned on 20 October 1870. Unlike the five earlier general councils held in Rome, which met in the Lateran Basilica and are known as Lateran Councils, it met in the Vatican Basilica, hence its name. Its best known decision is its definition of papal infallibility. The council was convoked to deal with the contemporary problems of the rising influence of rationalism, liberalism, and materialism. Its purpose was, besides this, to define the Catholic doctrine concerning the Church of Christ. There was discussion and approval of only two constitutions, the Dogmatic Constitution on the Catholic Faith and the First Dogmatic Constitution on the Church of Christ, the latter dealing with the primacy and infallibility of the Bishop of Rome. The first matter brought up for debate was the dogmatic draft of Catholic doctrine against the manifold errors due to rationalism. <laughs> Background this council was summoned by Pope Pius IX by a bull on 29 June 1868. The first session was held in St. Peter's Basilica on 8 December 1869. Preliminary sessions dealt with general administrative matters and committee assignments. Bishop Bernard John McQuaid complained of rainy weather, inadequate heating facilities and boredom. Bishop James Roosevelt Bailey of Newark, New Jersey, noted the high prices in Rome. When Lord Houghton asked Cardinal Manning what had been going on, he answered, Well, we meet, and we look at one another, and then we talk a little, but when we want to know what we have been doing, we read the Times. <laughs> Papal infallibility the doctrine of papal infallibility was not new and had been used by Pope Pius in defining as dogma, in 1854, the Immaculate Conception of Mary, the Mother of Jesus. However, the proposal to define papal infallibility itself as dogma met with resistance, not because of doubts about the substance of the proposed definition, but because some considered it an opportune to take that step at that time. Richard McBrien divides the bishops attending Vatican I into three groups. The first group, which McBrien calls the active infallibilists, was led by Henry Edward Manning and Ignatius von Sinestre. According to McBrien, the majority of the bishops were not so much interested in a formal definition of papal infallibility as they were in strengthening papal authority and, because of this, were willing to accept the agenda of the infallibilists. A minority, some 10% of the bishops, McBrien says, opposed the proposed definition of papal infallibility on both ecclesiastical and pragmatic grounds, because, in their opinion, it departed from the ecclesiastical structure of the early Christian Church. From a pragmatic perspective, they feared that defining papal infallibility would alienate some Catholics, create new difficulties for union with non-Catholics, and provoke interference by governments in ecclesiastical affairs. Those who held this view included most of the German and Austro-Hungarian bishops, nearly half of the Americans, one-third of the French, most of the Chaldeans and Melkites, and a few Armenians. Only a few bishops appear to have had doubts about the dogma itself. <laughs> Dei Filius on 24 April 1870, the dogmatic constitution on the Catholic faith Dei Filius was adopted unanimously. The draft presented to the Council on 8 March drew no serious criticism, but a group of 35 English-speaking bishops, who feared that the opening phrase of the first chapter, Sancta Romana Catholica Ecclesia, the Holy Roman Catholic Church, might be construed as favoring the Anglican branch theory, later succeeded in having an additional adjective inserted, so that the final text read, Sancta Catholica Apostolica Romana Ecclesia, the Holy Catholic Apostolic Roman Church. The Constitution thus set forth the teaching of the Holy Catholic Apostolic Roman Church on God, revelation, and faith. Topic: <laughs> Pastor Aeternus. Topic. 
There was stronger opposition to the draft constitution on the nature of the Church, which at first did not include the question of papal infallibility, but the majority party in the Council, whose position on this matter was much stronger, brought it forward. It was decided to postpone discussion of everything in the draft except infallibility. The decree did not go forward without controversy. Cardinal Filippo Ghidi, Archbishop of Bologna, proposed adding that the Pope is assisted by the Council of the Bishops manifesting the tradition of the churches. The Pope rejected Ghidi's view of the bishops as witnesses to the tradition, maintaining that, I am the tradition. On 13 July 1870, a preliminary vote on the section on infallibility was held in a general congregation, 451 voted simply in favor placet, 88 against non placet, and 62 in favor but on condition of some amendment placet iuxta modem. This made evident what the final outcome would be, and some 60 members of the opposition left Rome so as not to be associated with approval of the document. The final vote, with a choice only between Placet and non Placet, was taken on 18 July 1870, with 433 votes in favor and only two against defining as a dogma the infallibility of the Pope when speaking ex cathedra. The two votes in opposition were cast by Bishop Aloisio Riccio and Bishop Edward Fitzgerald. The dogmatic constitution states that the Pope has full and supreme power of jurisdiction over the whole Church, chapter 3 to 9, and that, when he speaks ex cathedra, that is, when, in the exercise of his office as shepherd and teacher of all Christians, in virtue of his supreme apostolic authority, he defines a doctrine concerning faith or morals to be held by the whole Church, he possesses, by the divine assistance promised to him in blessed Peter, that infallibility which the divine Redeemer willed his Church to enjoy in defining doctrine concerning faith or morals chapter 4 to 9. None of the bishops who had argued that proclaiming the definition was inopportune refused to accept it. Some Catholics, mainly of German language and largely inspired by the historian Ignaz von Dollinger, formed the separate Old Catholic Church in protest. Von Dollinger did not formally join the new group. Topic: <laughs> Suspension. Topic: Discussion of the rest of the document on the nature of the church was to continue when the bishops returned after a summer break. However, in the meanwhile the Franco-Prussian War broke out. With the swift German advance and the capture of Emperor Napoleon III, French troops protecting papal rule in Rome withdrew from the city. Consequently, on 20 September 1870, one month after the Kingdom of Italy had occupied Rome, Pope Pius IX, who then considered himself a prisoner in the Vatican, issued the bull Postquam Dei Munir, adjourning the council indefinitely. While some proposed to continue the council in the Belgian city of Mechlin, it was never reconvened. See also Second Vatican Council References Topic Notes Topic Topic Bibliography Topic Topic Further reading Topic 